Years ago, I was talking to my spiritual director, a Jesuit spiritual director, and I was thinking a lot, I guess, about uh, heaven in those days, the afterlife, what might occur. And um, I told him, I said, I, uh, I'm going to have a lot of questions for Jesus when I get there. Maybe you feel that way too. Huh? And he looked at me and he said, but Tom, it's not going to matter. We're going to be so happy. All those questions, all those concerns, all those things. You say, I want to find out about this. I'm so angry about this, right? I'm so frustrated. It's not going to matter. That's what the beatific vision is all about. And that's what Jesus is trying to tell the Pharisees tonight. See, they're trying to bring this question from earth to the afterlife. And he says, it's not going to matter. You're going to be so happy, right? The church tries to teach us that. We try to live that. But the church says in the, in the funeral liturgy, welcome them into paradise where there will be no sorrow, no weeping, no joy, or, uh, excuse me, no, no weeping or pain, but fullness of peace and joy. No sorrow, no weeping or pain, but fullness of peace and joy. That's a message we need right now in the midst of COVID. A place where there is no weeping, no sorrow, only fullness of peace and joy. And of course, we, we want that, but at the same time, sometimes we say, but can I at least bring a few of my grudges with me? Can I bring some of my resentments into the afterlife? It's not going to matter. It's going to be fullness of peace and joy. And thinking about the afterlife, thinking about what comes next, whether we've had a loss of a loved one, a child, or thinking about our own death, it's supposed to be transformative for us. See, Jesus is saying relationships get transformed in heaven. Relationships get transformed in the future but they also are supposed to transform our relationships here, right now. In thinking about that in my own culture in the United States, it seems that the more people think about the afterlife, it may not transform them always in positive ways. For example, one of the things I see people doing now is having bucket lists. Right? I see my life as a finite term, and therefore I need to develop a bucket list of places I want to see, things I want to do, right? And just so you know, those joining us from home, in this neighborhood at St. Martin's, which is a wonderful neighborhood, but a bucket list might be, I hope that I can have food the rest of the month. A bucket list might be, I hope that my child can go to high school. A bucket list might be, I hope I can le learn to read and write. That would be a great life for me. A bucket list might be, I hope I don't get shot, or I hope my child reaches past his teen years. That's what a bucket list looks like here. But in the States, oftentimes, it's the places I can go, the things I can accumulate for myself, the things that I want. It might be good for us if we're truly transformed by this image of heaven. We say we believe that and we want to transform our life. It might be good for us to develop a Catholic bucket list bucket list of things we want to do in our faith. Perhaps we might want to spend time or get to know someone in prison. That would be a good thing to have on your bucket list. A bucket list that says, I may want to invite my enemy over to my house and share a meal. A bucket list that says, maybe I should spend the night on the street one night, sleeping on the street, getting to know homeless people. All of these things are on Jesus' bucket list, huh? Read the Beatitudes. Read Matthew 25. I don't want to be too hard on us. I, 
I'm glad people have bucket lists and things they want to see and accomplish and this beautiful earth that we have. But the call of tonight's gospel is to be overjoyed that we're all heading to a land that has no pain, no sorrow, and to develop a Christian and Catholic bucket list of things that we want to do to transform our lives here and now. God bless us. God give us the grace to do that.